the idea of a barefoot minimalist shoe is just a shoe that gives you just enough protection for your feet without disrupting this feel on the ground, right? Hey, what's up guys? Coach Nate here, fun experience. I wanted to talk to you about shoes, specifically all the categories of shoes out there these days that we can use from stability shoe to shoes that are more cushioned now to shoes that are on the minimalist side that are almost mimic that barefoot like thing. And I think sometimes we think that we always have to be in one category or the other all the time. But I wanna to talk to you today about how I think about using these different category shoes, you know, to serve different purposes. Each has their benefits and each certainly has their drawbacks. But before we get into that, it's helpful to really remember like our purpose of shoes way back when in the first place was sort of like our purpose for clothing. It was more for warmth and protection. Right now I'm out on a trail, things are pretty smooth right now, but if I was on something that was a little rockier, a rootier, you know, I'd be having to step a little bit more gingerly. Similarly, if I'm in New York City in February and I'm running on a really cold, icy sidewalk, I don't know how long I'm gonna last bare feet. I don't know some of you guys will, but not me. <laughs> so that's that first kind of piece of this. And then the next piece is, you know, getting into the specifics. So I first wanted to talk about the purpose of the high stability shoe or the stability shoe and really what that does. Now, high stability shoes are shoes that have a little bit more structure and body to them. They usually have a little bit of a higher heel lift in the shoe and that takes a little tension off of our calves and our Achilles and they also have a little bit more structure in the arch of the foot. I'll run up here on this trail. And that kind of helps the arch from overly collapsing and our foot naturally pronates and naturally likes to roll in. But if we pronate too much, then we have problems with our knee, our hip, our Achilles, kind of everything becomes an issue when we start to over pronate a little bit. So the idea of a stability shoe is that it helps control that motion, limit that range of motion. And it is really great for newer runners and for people who are using run, running to get into fitness for the first time. They haven't you know, done a lot of running yet or training yet and running's new. So this kind of gives them that additional stability and support. I love this trail. And it's one of the real benefits of the shoes. Now, the drawbacks of the shoe is that in the way that it helps us, it can start to hurt us. If I'm always in a higher stable shoe, I never get a chance to develop and strengthen my feet. I never really get that chance to lengthen my calf or my Achilles and, and you know, strengthen and improve my running form. And then the other side is, you know, these shoes can almost restrict our motion too much and create problems of their own. And you know, dollars to donuts, the jury's out on whether or not, you know, higher stability motion control shoes have prevented running injuries in the long run, right? It doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. So there are some benefits for those newer runners, but at the same time, it can really hurt us too. So next thing I wanna talk about are neutral shoes. Now the cushioning shoe category is probably the broadest shoe category we have. And it's like the Swiss army knife. You can really, you know, get a lot in this category. Uh, more broadly speaking, you're seeing uh, a heel lift of maybe four millimeters to eight, maybe upwards of 10, whereas the stability shoes are usually eight to 10 or north. Um, and you're seeing much less stability in the heel post. It's not as rigid. So that foot can more naturally roll and move as it as it should and it's great for most people and most runners who have some fitness some strength kind of some natural range of motion in the ankle and what's great about them is that they allow us to ramp up our mileage a little bit more quickly than we would otherwise because we have that little bit of a softening of the blow with every single step and they allow us to get into running 
on rough earth pavement, especially if I'm running on concrete or just paved roads all the time. And morning. morning. And they're also great for, um, you know, preventing that late race exhaustion. And when I'm almost looking for a little bit of that extra rebound from the shoe, you know, the shoes can do that. And you're starting to see that with, you know, the the Nike Vaporply Next Percent, which was the shoe that was used to break two hours. Yeah, there's a carbon plate in there, but some people aren't sure if it's the plate or if it's just just new innovations in the cushioning that really, you know, did the trick. So those are a lot of the benefits. Now, the drawback of the shoe is that sometimes they do such a good job of cushioning you from the ground that they sort of deaden your feel for the ground and they allow you to run in ways that your body wouldn't necessarily want to run. It would be uh, a little heavier, a little more heel driven, more heel strike driven. And I think that it can sort of mask some of these symptoms and you know give us this artificial sense of safety that we're okay whereas in fact we're not and uh, i think we start to see some different types of injuries especially stress fractures is my own theory that i'm cooking up high mileage stress fractures aren't happening in lower stability shoes they're usually happening in shoes that have a little bit more cushioning and stability etc so you run the gamut you can go shoes that have a little bit more support or a little bit less support, a little more cushion, a little bit more less cushion, but they're kind of my Swiss army knife for running everything from my first mile to 5K all the way up to marathon and ultra distance. Next thing, we talk about my favorite, which is that barefoot, and hey, maybe I'll run barefoot on this trail. Man, how beautiful is this? Some of these awesome trails above my house. Um, let's take my shoes off and we'll kind of explain, you know, what the benefit is of more going barefoot or minimalist. So I've got these shoes on right here. These happen to be the new Nike React Infinities and a good example of that cushioning shoe. I got a little got a little mud on them, but um, not a ton of uh, heel raise, not a huge big medial supports here. I've got some move and, and, and freedom, but a lot of cushioning and, and a lot of bounce in this shoe. But they're nothing like our original body shock absorbers, which are bum, 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 our feet. So I'm gonna take my shoes off here and I'm just gonna sort of run a little bit uh, barefoot in these things. Here, I'll go this way. And I just noticed that when I'm running barefoot and I have my shoes off, that my body changes a little bit where I'm expecting to absorb the blow, a little bit different. I'm thinking about, uh, I'm thinking about being a little bit more ginger and intentional with my steps. My feet tend to land a little bit more underneath me. I tend maybe to land a little bit more underneath my mid or forefoot. I don't want to land on my heel quite as much. And when I'm doing this, I get just this incredible feel for the ground. Like I just know exactly I'm stepping on a bunch of pebbles right now, so I'm being careful there. I'll turn around and go back. And you know, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah shot here of going and the idea of a barefoot minimalist shoe is just a shoe that gives you just enough protection for your feet without disrupting this feel on the ground right it's totally 100 percent the focus for that so these shoes have zero drop very very low cushioning and virtually no support and they're just great for developing that foot strength, that feel for the ground and everything else. Now, there are drawbacks to this shoe. It asks a lot of your calf and Achilles. If I'm not used to that length, if I'm in a normal shoe, my heel's raised up a little bit. But all of a sudden, if I'm in this flat shoe, all of a sudden I've got this this much more length than that calf and Achilles. And that takes a while to adjust and get used to, it really does. So I need to ease into this and if I don't, I can definitely blow myself up with some injuries and some other issues. The other thing is that I am probably a little bit more muscularly fatigued, especially in the calves and the feet. So later in the stage, I don't get that natural energy return anymore that I would from another shoe. Um, and it kind of blows me out. So I could get away with it longer on trails, but if I'm doing longer road runs, that becomes a little bit more challenging. But I still like to do it 
for some of my shorter runs, for some of my warm ups and my cool downs, so that I have that in the mix. So, we have these different categories. What's the right shoe for you? As I said, if you're that newer runner, you know, you might want to find something that gives you a little bit more stability. Maybe that's in the official stability category, or it's one of those cushion shoes that just has a little bit more heel lift and just a little bit more arch support. I don't want to be in that shoe forever. So if I'm running in that shoe, that means that when I'm walking around, if I'm in the gym, if I'm cross training, I'm trying to go in a shoe that's deliberately lower profile, maybe a little bit more on the lower end of cushioning or maybe a little bit more on the minimalist side. If you're someone who runs on the trails a lot and you want to kind of, and or you want to develop that form, improve your, your strength of your feet, you know, spend some time every week in a minimalist shoe. Some people, this is a lifestyle choice and they just want to run in that all the time, that's fine. I find that it's difficult to be competitive in a road marathon if I'm wearing, you know, strap of leather under my feet, so to speak, right? So I want a little bit more cushioning and support. But you can see each of these categories has, you know, the ups and downs. And actually, if you want to learn more about cushioning and how it can cushion and protect us, but also how it can lead us to landing and impacting the ground in even harder ways. Well, I made a video for you on just that. It should be right over my shoulder, right over here. Great watch, really fascinating if you want to learn more about this shoe stuff. Because I'm going to keep running in these beautiful trails. I'll see you woo, in the next one. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.